One of the things that made both of my alone journeys really unique was that rather than go with the fancy high-tech modern gear, I did all I could to take as much homemade gear out of natural materials like fur, leather, and wool as I possibly could. I originally made a fur parka for going to the Northwest Territories on season six of Alone, doing the best that I could with the materials that I had available to try to replicate something more like the native people of the far north would wear. Now, the Inuit style dress is very, very critical to the Inuit lifestyle, and it's really like a shelter rather than what we think of as clothing. The whole idea of it is that it provides enough protection that they could weather a storm in it with their own body and fat reserves as the wood stove and two layers of clothing as the home, as the shelter, the protection from the weather. So I didn't have two layers of caribou fur as would have been amazing, one with the fur to the outside and one with the fur to the inside. So I did the best that I could with the furs and buckskin that I had. So the buckskin is the outer layer. And then I did use an insulating layer of a down jacket in the middle and then furs to the inside. Now, for the first time I wore a fur parka on a loan, it was in the more baggy style that is more typical of Inuit clothing. And that isn't just about the ergonomics, it's actually very functional for those climates. The thing is that in a very dry cold, a climate like you get in far Northern Canada, what you tend to have is that the moisture that you might accumulate in your clothes is all coming from the inside out. And so the idea is to allow that moisture laden air to get out of your clothing without it getting your insulation wet. So that's why the loose style of the Inuit clothing, it's not belted, it's just long and baggy so that all of that moisture laden air when it gets towards the outside of the clothing and starts to get cold, cold is dense, right? And then it will drop out of the clothing. So for my first round of alone, I didn't have a lot of time and I didn't have a lot of furs. I used just the furs that I had on hand. So the lining of the jacket was quite a mishmash of what you got. There was New Zealand possum that I had picked up as a roadkill on a road trip around the South Island of New Zealand. There was bobcat that I had picked up also as a roadkill and tanned myself. There was a lot of rabbit skins from rabbits that I had raised and butchered and tanned the hides of and beaver and there was fox in there and I can't even remember. It was literally every fur that I had on hand to try to make it come together. It was really warm and absolutely fabulous and it kept me extremely warm and comfortable in the Arctic. But honestly, it was very poorly made by my standards. You can see in some of the footage, it doesn't, it doesn't fit great. It's a little bulky and awkward. The buttons don't even line up because it was such a rush job. I was doing everything I could to get that jacket finished before I launched into location. I was thoughtful with making the outer layer of buckskin in that I used a grain on leather. So this is a grain on rain tan that I used for the shoulders because that was the area that the weather hits, right? It's the only horizontal area on the clothing. So I wanted that to be one that would shed the weather a bit, thus using a grain leather. The rest of it is buckskin, which is not in any way water or weather resistant. I did that on purpose again, so that the moisture laden air from my body, from my own sweat would be able to get out through the buckskin, buckskin breathes. So the idea was that this was only going to be a good jacket once we got to really low temperatures, a real dry cold. That is what I had for a lot of my time out in the Northwest Territories. That said, because it was such a rush job, the jacket started falling apart on me a bit. And also I actually took it apart a bit because with all of the trapping I was doing, kneeling in the snow, I was having my body heat melt the snow I was kneeling on and getting my pants wet, which was a lot of effort to thaw them and dry them out every day. So I ended up pulling some of the beaver fur out of my parka to put it on the legs, the, the top of my boots so that I could kneel on it. So the jacket was in rough shape by the time I left. And you can see in some of the footage on the later episodes, how it's weird and bunchy in the back because of taking that beaver fur out. When I was invited for Alone Frozen, I thought, okay, I think I wanna take the jacket again. It did so well by me in the Northwest Territories, but because it was poorly made and falling apart, I wanted to completely revamp it. So this is the new and improved parka 
that was the second iteration of my homemade buckskin and fur parka for my alone journeys. Now, this was a bit of a gamble because I knew that the weather for Alone Frozen was going to be more of a wet cold for longer in the season. Not only were we further south, but we were also on the coast. And so the huge mass of the ocean tends to mean that you get more erratic weather in the fall and it takes longer for the temperatures actually to drop as low. So it was definitely a bit of a risk, but I thought that it was gonna be worth it. So I completely redid the lining of the jacket. It's all different furs. I happened to be visiting the Northern Oregon area when I got the call that gave a thumbs up that Frozen was for sure gonna happen. And I happened to be in my favorite leather store, Oregon Leather in Portland, Oregon. Absolutely fabulous, independently owned business. Really, really love those guys. They had some reindeer hides from Scandinavia. So I usually don't work with commercial leather, but it was so amazing to find the fur that is specific to the wardrobes of Northern peoples that I snapped it up. That was the main body of the jacket. So it was two beautiful reindeer furs, incredibly soft, incredibly warm, because you think about the climates those creatures are living in, right? However, it does shed. Every time I wear it, I end up with a lot of hairs that I have to pick off of my garments, but super, super warm and cozy. So that was the body. I made this jacket more fitted for my time in Labrador than I had for the time in the Northwest Territories. Now, there are some ways where that isn't as good because fitted and therefore a little bit more pinched in at the waist means it's harder for that damp, cool air from the body to fall down, but also it's a lot easier to move and be active with it a little bit more fitted, especially when in a survival situation like that, where I'm hauling a lot of stuff, doing a lot of trapping, that kind of thing. So that felt like an okay trade-off to me and it ended up working out great for me. So more fitted, I went and totally redid the buckskin and I added these lovely pinstripes of the darker dyed buckskin and bark tan in the back to kind of accentuate the more fitted nature and to give me a place for going in and changing the design. And then I also added a system for the front because I knew it would be so warm. I made a double closure so I can close this with hooks and eyes so that it's not completely sealed, and that way I won't overheat. Some of that warm, moisture-laden air from my own body can get out through these more gappy spots here, or I can seal it up more thoroughly with a zipper so that it's completely sealed. So in the Arctic, all I had was buttons, so it didn't close as well. It had a good amount of overlap, so I didn't notice a lot of cold coming in that way, but this was a much better seal, and you can see just for pretty and because I had a lot of different colored pieces of bark tan leather, I made this beautiful kind of rainbow of browns out of the bark tan leather for the closure. So that closure worked really great for me. And the other thing was that the double system with the hooks and eyes meant that the fur was all tucked to the inside away from the zipper. Before I had that system, with just one closure trying to zip it up, I was constantly getting the fur caught in the zipper. It was not working very well, but this was bomber. <laughs> Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notifications bell to hear when my videos come out. And if you're interested in learning more about the strategies that I used on both of my alone experiences and wilderness living in general, please consider joining my Patreon team. We have live calls regularly where we talk about some of these things. Really sweet, supportive family, big skills focus. It's a great way to get to know more about me and help support what I do. The hood is a different kind of fur. So the hood is all fox fur, and this is fox from the northern regions. So not Arctic fox, but Arctic region red fox, also very, very thick, very, very warm. And canine furs, specifically they say wolves, are good for ruffs because they say that the moisture-laden breath is less likely to freeze on those, that for some reason it resists that, both wolf and wolverine. I didn't have either of those, wasn't into the idea of a trapped wolf fur, and wolverine is not something that's very easy to come by. So I used fox, which was the closest I could get, and incredibly warm, and come on, it is so beautiful, right? This gorgeous orangey fur.
for the sleeves of the jackets, I didn't want them to be as bulky as the rest of it because I wanted to be able to move really easily. And they also didn't need to be as warm, right? That's part of why we use vests to stay warm. It's so that, so that we have more mobility and so that it's just our core that has lots of insulation. We don't need as much on our sleeves. So use thinner hides. So this darker brown fur here, this is rabbit fur. You can kind of see that also in the cuff here from rabbits that I raised and tanned the furs of myself. I also added more details to the sleeves and the hood this time around. The hood in the Arctic season was not very good. I didn't have enough furs to fully round out the hood. So the liner was a little bit smaller than the hood itself. And it meant that it didn't actually fit me very well. It was a rush job made with what I had and what I had and the time I had wasn't good enough to make the hood as good as I wanted it to. So this time I made sure the hood fit really well. And then I also made the system with Velcro so that I could either have the hood down low over my face to have very little exposure or so that I could pull the hood down with really sturdy Velcro to keep it further so the fur was out of my eyes so that I could have better visibility for things like trapping and what have you. And then the other thing was having these bark tan cuffs for the jacket in the Arctic, I had the beaver fur on the outside, but that meant that I was constantly singeing that fur, reaching over the fire for my pan or what have you, and it would get in the way. So this time I had the fur just to the inside, and then I had the bark tan, so sturdier leather as the cuff itself. And then I also had them cinching so that it was easy for me to seal out the weather and cinch those sleeves down tight. So a lot more thought and care went into the designing of the second iteration informed by how the jacket did for me in the Northwest Territories on season six. Unfortunately, it was still a very wet cold for the vast majority of my time in Labrador on the frozen season. That cyclonic weather pattern with that crazy wind and rain and then really wet snow that we was being driven horizontally and that I actually couldn't wear this that often because that driven wet snow would have soaked this jacket really quickly. So while I put a lot of time and care into it and felt like it was an amazing jacket that I was very, very happy with, very proud of, you don't see me wearing it until the very end when it finally got to that really bitter, low temperature, dry cold. And then it was amazing. It still served me well. It was still my sleeping pad. So this thing so thick and fluffy laid out on the ground with my sleeping bag on top of it. And then the hood of my sleeping bag fit into the hood of the jacket made kind of a, a natural pillow. So it was really wonderful. I used it every day, regardless of not wearing it as its intended use as a parka, but yeah, not as much wearing of a garment as I had hoped I would get out of this. But also there are so many things that are amazing about having buckskin in that type of a situation because you can cut the buckskin up and do other things with it. It can be cordage, it can be bandages, it can be pieces for repairing boots and moccasins, all kinds of things. And in fact, when I cut myself really badly on my pinky, I had a limited number of band-aids and first aid th things in the first aid kit we get issued. And I was really afraid that I was gonna run through them and not have enough. So I did actually cut off some pieces of the jacket. You can see there's a funky edge here and wrap those around my fingers and use them for bandages. So that's an amazing thing that Buckskin provides that fancy high-tech modern gear doesn't. Another of the things that's really great about this versus the high-tech gear is what I mentioned in the beginning, the fact that buckskin breathes. It both cuts the wind, which a lot of wool doesn't do as well, and it breathes. So it is actually functionally a lot warmer than some of the high-tech gear that is made to be both weather resistant, waterproof, and insulative. Eventually, those are going to take on moisture from the sweat of your body that can't get out and then it's going to lower the insulative value because water conducts temperature right so you have to have your insulation dry to actually keep you warm so buckskin furs significantly better than the fancy high-tech gear 
lots of time to make. It is definitely heavier and it didn't do well for me in the wet cold, but all in all, super, super happy with this parka and really, really happy with the second iteration and all of the huge improvements that I made between the first time in the Northwest Territories for season six and the second time I wore it on Alone on Alone Frozen. I will be putting out more videos about all of the things that I made for my time on Alone Frozen, including some of the things that I made out there with more details. So keep your eyes open on this channel.